Hello again and welcome to another video from the Marketing Study Guide. In this video, I want to have a look at a case study of very successful repositioning. And it's a good example of how repositioning is done and what you're trying to achieve. Now, this case is built around uh, an Australian brand called Dare Ice Coffee. Uh, as you can see, there's some of their products there. And I've, underneath, I've got the, the Effie Award. So this is from 2017 when this brand won the, the Grand Effie. Uh, for those who don't know, the Effie Awards basically stand for Effie for effectiveness. How effective was this campaign? Uh, and they're considered, you know, one of the leading awards in the industry because they look at the outcomes rather than the creative side of advertising. They go, hey, you know, what was what was the success? What did you change? What was your return on investment? Um, so it's really about the foundations of marketing success. Okay, so what they did is they went through a, a classic repositioning approach. I've got the points there. First, they, they rethought their target market and, and jumped at a quite a, a different target market, not a logical one from um, an, an analytical viewpoint. Then with the new target market, they constructed a new positioning. So they repositioned the brand. So this was an established brand that was repositioned in image and, and uh, key benefit. And then we're going to have a look at how they executed that, which is the marketing mix, the implementation side of it. Now, in terms of a flavored milk coffee, on, on, on this side here in the green, we've got the traditional above average consumers. So this, these are our heavy consumers, people who buy this product regularly and, and drink uh, at well above average. And as you can see, they are physical type workers, people working construction, people doing long driving uh, of a truck, uh, car mechanics, farmers, people working outside physical labor. Uh, and that sort of makes sense because the product is, is cool because it's ice, ice milk. Uh, it has caffeine, so it gives you some sort of energy level. It's easy to carry around with you uh, if you're out working. You know, if you've got to get a, go get a coffee from a coffee shop, that's inconvenient, whereas this is bottled, so you can just take it with you. And on this side, we have the below average consumers, light users of, of the product. So people who work in the office because they can go get their own coffee, I suppose, or something else. Uh, busy people working in retail. Um, managerial staff. So, you know, that was the situation. So heavy users tend to be tradesmen type people. Okay, so his dare here, and that's their key competitor called Icebreak. And both of them were targeting the, the physical worker aspect. And Icebreak was clearly doing it better than dare, who was, you know, even behind them in terms of uh, what we call product category share or market share. I, I've used the word product category because I've lumped in Coca-Cola and energy drinks, Red Bull and V Energy uh, in, into the market. Now, they, these players here are not direct competitors. They're not iced coffee. But what they do is they offer a sim similar benefit. Something that's convenient, it's cold, it has caffeine, it, it gives you energy, uh, it makes you... Uh, work a little bit harder, which is the intent of the product. So all of these products here, even though they're, they're quite distinctive in terms of their design, they are designed to meet the same core need of the consumer. Uh, unfortunately, Dare is here and they're not performing well. Well, it's still, it's still reasonably well, but they want to improve their performance. So this is before they started their campaign. Okay, so direct competitors, indirect competitors, um, you still got to take a, uh, some market share away from both of them. Okay, so as I mentioned, all of these products meet the core product, which you've probably seen the three levels of the of the product before. Even though the actual product, an energy drink, a, a soda drink, a milk drink, is different, the core need is identical. Creating this competitive set. Okay, if I put this into a positioning map. Uh, I've got perceptual map for cold caffeine drinks. I've got any time drink, any time of the day, 
or more of a morning drink. Uh, so as a coffee type drink, it tends to be a morning drink. Something like Coca-Cola, uh, people can go to a fast food chain at night time and get a burger, fries and a, and a Coke. So even a night time doesn't seem to be an issue. So more of an any time drink. And in terms of energy, obviously we've got our energy drinks, Red Bull and, and V being energy. And down here, sliding down, we've got ice, Coke somewhere in the middle because it obviously has caffeine. Um, and because these are milk-based coffees, they're not seen as strong. They have this sort of weakness. Um, but Icebreak had positioned itself a little bit stronger. And it, as you can see the ad there, it says real coffee and because it's the real coffee. And Dare is down here being a little bit weaker. So we can see Dare is very much tied to a morning drink, uh, as is Icebreak. But Icebreak had the advantage of having more energy. Uh, but either way, Dare is not well placed on this positioning map. So they decided to rethink the strategy. Rather than keeping in a, in a market share battle, they go, okay, how, how do we improve this? And they go, okay, well, we're here against Icebreak. We're going after the heavy users, but we end up with a head-to-head -head competition. Maybe we step back and we think somewhere else. And that's exactly what they did. They came over here to lower consumers, people who do not buy the product as much, but you're the only competitor. You you become the only solution. So do you go after a big segment where there's multiple competitors, or do you step away and go, oh yeah, this is a smaller group, this is a smaller market, but we're the only ones offering a solution. So they started with, with that approach, a new target market, Obviously, their goal was to grow consumption and grow that market as well. Okay, so as you have probably learned in, in marketing, when we think about the target market, we go, okay, how big are they? Is that, that segment growing? How competitive it is? Okay, so because they've gone on the third point, it's very competitive, let's go off to a different segment. We now need a new position. So the brand now needs to be repositioned because it was positioned over here. Now it needs to be positioned here. Okay, so office workers, their main target market, they go, okay, rather than physical benefit, it's a mental benefit. It's a mental clarity. Helps you work better. Um, and, and uni students would possibly be picked up as that. Now, if you're in college and you've got an assignment and it's not doing well, you know, have have some dare ice coffee and you'll get, you know, you'll be able to work a lot better. And what they were trying for, for is a, a choice of habit. So when you're not thinking straight, when you've got a deadline, you've got a report to write, um, you've got to do something at work, member office work type people, and it's just not, take a break, go off, get a dare, have some caffeine and some milk, and that will pep you up. Okay, so if you think about the old days of you know, classical conditioning there, which is a learning theory, I think about when people go to uh, the movies or the cinemas, often in, in many, many countries they go, oh gee, I feel like popcorn. That, that's classical conditioning where you connect an event uh, to eating popcorn. Most people do not eat popcorn at home but they are far more likely to eat it when they go to the movies because they've been conditioned to it. So the word conditioned. And, and, and classic is just where you keep repeating two stimuluses together, like movies, popcorn, movies, popcorn, and you have that aroma, and it becomes a habit. Uh, and this is what Dare was trying to do. You feel mentally tired or not thinking straight or just not making a lot of progress, and your reflex is to grab a dare. You know, when you're not thinking straight, dare iced coffee is what you need to get. And then that, the ideal is the benefit of that is you, you know, with the, with the caffeine and maybe the sugar and, and whatever, the almost like a, uh, some food, a little bit, uh, like a snack. It, it gives you greater energy and greater performance, which then reinforces this cycle and it becomes a habit or a reflex decision.
Okay, let's have a look at some of their promotional activities, what they did to reposition the brand. So we've got famous sayings or common sayings here, but they've been mixed up. So it's normally you say when you're not on the ball, but it says when you're ball on the knot. Obviously, there's a couple of things happening here. And there's three examples there. They had, they had others. Firstly, um, is attention getting device? You sort of read it and go, hang, hang on, that doesn't make sense. And then you process it or interpret it. And hopefully that ends up in your memory a bit more. If you see, obviously see these on a regular basis because you go, what, what, what? I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, I get it. And then you, you work it out and go, okay, a little dare will fix it, which became their tagline. So you then connected it in that regard. Uh, here is, uh, the same example here when your place is all over the head. Uh, again, the, the saying's out of whack. But you can see here they have misspelled dare. So you know every, every packaging is spelt differently. And again, it is it, designed as an intention game. Oh gee, what's oh, hang on, what's going on here? What word is that? I've never seen that word before. And then you, you you connect the dots. Okay, it makes it a little bit more fun and interactive. And some people might buy it and take it back to the office and say, oh, oh, they made a mistake on their packaging, and possibly it generates a bit of Initial social media, people think it's a, a a real mistake instead of an intentional mistake. So it all it's all kind of compounding and reinforcing that positioning that when you're not thinking straight, this is the product for you. They even um, took some Google ads against some commonly misspelt words. Um, you can't normally do this. Companies or brands need special permission to do this from Google, and they need to to work with them. So you can see somebody spelt the word accommodate wrong. As Google does, it says, do you mean this? And um, then they've got to write an ad. Um, now, some people will click on it. Most people will not click on it, of course, because they're looking for accommodation. They weren't looking for a dare ice coffee and a little dare will fix it. But it does keep building and reinforcing that positioning that you're trying to get. You make a silly mistake. Than dare is for you. And this extended to outdoor advertising, etc. Um, obviously, there's a billboard deliberately upside down, so I've got the image of the, the, the city for you. And they did a whole bunch of 15 second commercials where people just did silly things. So let's just have a look at one of those now. Your place is all over the head. A dare fix will fix it. You can see he, he thought he was connecting his tying up his bike or chaining his bike to a pole when it was actually a truck and then drove off. So again, this constant reinforcement, this use of uh, humor. We can see a little bit of the target market thinking there. Obviously, it's people not thinking straight, but it's also uh, younger people and a little bit more male oriented. So let's have a look at their revised positioning that I've constructed. So I've kept the attribute of any time drink and morning drink. And dare is now up here because it's not something to get you going in the morning when you're physically working. It could be three or four in the afternoon and you've got a deadline um, and it's not going well. Hey, dare is the solution. Or um, you could be a university student and it's, you know, your assignment's due at midnight and it's now 10 o'clock and you've got two hours to go and I've got to keep going. So it becomes like a pick-me-up type thing. It's almost like a, a, a tonic. It's like a solution to a particular need. So we're suddenly going, we were down here before on the map uh, in terms of a morning drink and we're right at the top there and probably even more suitable than Coca-Cola at night time. And I've got a different attribute here I replace that one because we are now targeting mental energy as opposed to physical energy. So we have our key competitor ice break down here and our energy drinks there, which are more a bit of both. But now we have a distinct positioning. Before we were not well positioned and we were behind ice break and we had morning drinks. So the market was that big. Now it's any time. So the market is a lot larger. 
and were over here by ourselves. We've walked into uh, a, a, a huge gap in the marketplace. Okay, so what's happened? Keep in mind this happened over a five or six year period. Okay, so this compounded over time. So we have a look um, before, what happened after. We found that the market group at Red Bull and V tended to hold their position. Icebreak also generally held their market share. Coca-Cola, and it could be environmental factors as well, fell and then Dare moved right up into this spot. So they well surpassed their key competitor and they actually started outselling uh, Coca-Cola in this in the Australian market. Um, and then grew the category. Okay, so how, how do we have these players staying the same and uh, some minor movements in there? What happened was Dare was able to attract new consumers. That's called growing the category. Very effective because it doesn't affect your competition as much. So um, Icebreak, probably their sales went up, even though they had 5% before roughly, they have 5% now of a bigger market. So they actually benefit from the actions of Dare bringing more people into the marketplace. They've done well, so well here because the market's got bigger and uh, they've got a clearly defined position. And the other thing that attracts people is, or increases sales, is people start buying that product more consistently or at a greater volume. So in case, instead of once a week, they're now buying it three times a week or something like that. And obviously the, the only you know, one that suffered here was Coca-Cola, but that could have been the sort of the anti-sugar move that was happening around that time. So if I summarize what happened, obviously, the brand management of Dare go, okay, we want we want to get bigger. We want to grow sales, market share, profit. A very common goal for, for most businesses. And obviously the second point there I've added is energy drinks were moving into their their space. Energy drinks have obviously done very well over the last twenty years or so. And they were taking, you know, obviously away from Coca Cola and caffeine type soft drinks and, and soda drinks, but also away from coffee drinks. So how do we how do we find a space to compete? Strategy, they rethought the target market, a brand new approach to target market, and then new target market, let's reposition the brand. And it became all around when you're not you when you are not thinking straight, there is the solution. It's the only solution. It's what you need. So it become a very powerful positioning uh, as opposed to their traditional get going in the morning when you're uh, doing physical work. Um, the, the outcome and, and why they uh, won the Grand Effie Award and why it was recognized as the best campaign in the country of that year, 150% increase in sales. Now, that's not 50%. 100% means you double. 150% is two and a half times sales. So this brand dramatically improved. So by changing the, 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 the strategy, and obviously, as we saw, they surpassed uh, ice, ice break and become the market leader. So this demonstrates the power of repositioning. We often, in marketing textbooks, is often re you get the impression that repositioning is a reactive, oh, gee, we're not doing well, we're being hammered, sales are down, the market's falling, or oh, we need to reposition as a last resort. Uh, we've got no other options. No, repositioning can be a very powerful move. Obviously, you risk giving up your existing uh, customer base and your existing position, but as we saw in this case, it can be a very, very strong move. So that's it. That's the example of uh, successful repositioning. Please check out my other videos, and there's a link to a teaching site that has a teaching exercise for this case study.